The, the uh, Shadow Emergency Management Minister Perrin Davey on this program a bit earlier said that questions have to be asked how the Weather Bureau got their forecast so wrong. Is that fair enough? Um, I think you can always learn more from every natural disaster that hits Australia. Uh, unfortunately, what we're seeing is these natural disasters are becoming more frequent, not less. Um, whether or uh, weather events and severe weather events uh, are something that uh, we rely on, the expert advice of the Bureau of Meteorology and other agencies to make sure that we're best prepared. Uh, what we're focused on right now is that immediate support for people who are still feeling the impact of this major natural disaster. Uh, in the weeks and months ahead, of course, you will always have, uh, you always look at what can, can be learnt, how you can make sure that you support people even better in the future. Uh, that's part of being a good government. We will do that. But um, I think the focus right now is probably a little less on the Bureau of Meteorology and a little more on the people of North Queen, far north Queensland. We've, we've seen the parliamentary expenses released today in terms of uh, the, the travel requirements by the Prime Minister and others. This sort of transparency doesn't always sit well with politicians, but do you welcome it? I do welcome it. It's... Uh, entirely appropriate that members of parliament, myself, uh, all 227 members of parliament are accountable for using public money. Um, what we know is that this is the first release of this information that we've had in more than a year and a half because uh, your viewers uh, probably wouldn't know this. It's a very, uh, it's a very niche story, but um, what was called the new parliamentary expense management system was a piece of software developed by the coalition uh, the biggest problem with that software is they spent $69 million and it still couldn't give us a proper report on what money was being spent. So finally, we have the light shining in again. Uh, constituents can see how their members of parliament are spending Commonwealth resources. That's appropriate. Um, this is, these are taxpayer dollars. Uh, we need to make sure that people like myself from Western Australia can get to parliament in Canberra. We do spend Commonwealth money to do that. Um, but it's important that we're accountable for it and that accountability has finally returned, uh, in large part thanks to the hard work of uh, Minister Don Farrell. Is it, uh, does it stack up? Does it pass the pub test, some of the, the family expenditure and so on? Uh, I think members of the public want their politicians to stay in touch with their family. Uh, I take my children to Canberra on occasion. Uh, I think that makes me a better representative uh, where I'm actually doing the juggle of being, I hope, a good dad, but also being a good advocate for my community here in Perth. Um, this has been, for a long period of time, these uh, expenses are authorised by the Remuneration Tribunal, who are an independent body, setting the amounts, making sure that every Member of Parliament is treated uh, fairly and there's not uh, political interference in the setting of those rates of allowances. Um, that's the right thing. Um, this is just being publicly accountable for the use of those expense op, um, those expense payments. Um, and I mm. think that's good. People can say, yep, I took my kids to Canberra a couple of times during the year. They can see where people have travelled. They can see what they've spent on printing and other things. Um, but ultimately, when all of these discussions are done, what matters is the decisions that parliamentarians make when they're voting on the floor of parliament. Um, and ultimately, that's what I think the Australian public want to see us doing, is getting on with the job of making good decisions in the national interest. What are your constituents telling you at the moment about the, the difficulties this Christmas? Is it being felt to a similar extent in Perth as it is on the East Coast? Because cost of living pressures are immense for many people right now, particularly in the face of those rate rises. Yeah, uh People in my electorate and people all over Australia are feeling real pressure in their household budgets. We've been really upfront with people that we hear that message and that what we are trying to do as a government is to help where we can without making it worse. And I think that's the thing that people understand that the, this inflation challenge, if we get it right, we will see inflation moderate in 2024. And we're already seeing some encouraging signs of that. But if we get it wrong, we actually just prolong the pain. So. People are really understanding that the sorts of measures that the Australian government have put in place that have benefited uh, in people in my electorate, I mean, here in um, 
Western Australia, I think families have saved about $23 million with cheaper medicines. Uh, in my electorate of Perth, about 6,800 families have benefited from cheaper childcare. But they're things that actually take a little bit of pressure off inflation at the same time as taking pressure off the household budgets. And they're those sorts of things that we've been trying to back in. The, the, red, she, the red Sea ship request by the United States uh, looks like, well, no decision's been finalised apparently, but all, this, all the noises from the PM and others suggest that the, the government won't be providing a naval vessel or warship to help in uh, preventing the Houthi rebels from firing on, on trade vessels. Should, should Australia front up? Why, why aren't we? Well, Australia already supports a combined maritime force that does, in that region, support freedom of movement, freedom of navigation. Uh, that's the principle that we stand up for uh, across the globe. Uh, obviously, in our region, it's very important as an island nation that we are able to have um, freedom of navigation in our region where we need to make sure that Australian goods uh, can get to our customers and also that we can get the uh, products we need out of global supply chains. So... We do our bit in terms of making sure that we support those uh, that global rules-based order. Um, what you've also seen the Prime Minister say is that uh, we consider those requests for additional personnel, but we've already delivered upon uh, one of the other requests from the United States in particular, that is for more diplomatic and public support, uh, which uh, indeed the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister of New Zealand uh, expressed earlier today. Will it be seen as a bit rich, though, that Australia, the week after Congress... S secures the, the passage of that AUKUS legislation to give us or supply subs, not give them to us, but supply, obviously, at a, at a cost. But uh, that, that legislation went through Congress. A week later, we reject a request for a, a frigate. Uh, as I just outlined, we've uh, responded positively to a number of the requests that have been put to us. There are a number of matters that are still part of ongoing discussions, which obviously even your program highlighted earlier were engaged on by the, senior, the most senior defence officials earlier today. Uh, we'll continue to look at how Australia can best assist in international efforts, some of which we already contribute Australian personnel to, to ensure that we get that world that we want, which is a world where you do have freedom of navigation, where uh, those who are uh, shipping goods can do so safely and indeed where we contribute as we best see fit to Australia's role in preserving peace, uh, both in our, on our seas, but also in terms of uh, trying to resolve some of the, and assist with steps towards peace for some of the conflicts that we're seeing in the world. 